Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and today we're going to be checking out another Z690 motherboard. This time we are checking out the ASUS Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi-Fi D4. Bit of a mouthful there, but we'll crack on and uh, take a look at it nonetheless. So this is uh, one of the really, really interesting additions to uh, not just uh, the ASUS lineup, but also for the Z690 lineup as a whole, because what we've got here is a relatively premium motherboard. We're looking at a board that costs less than £300 here in the UK. It retails for about £250, so I'm guessing that will translate into around... 250 to $300, maybe a touch more. Um, I could actually find it uh, on sale in the US at the moment, not sure why. Um, it's listed on Amazon and I'll put the link below. Um, hopefully at some point you'll be able to check it out and see what the score is. Uh, but for now, it's looking like a kind of middle of the road um, motherboard in terms of price, uh, 250 pounds as I say is not as cheap as you'll find in the AMD market right now with B550 boards and that kind of stuff going for you know well less than 200 pounds. But we are looking at a brand new CPU socket, brand new chipset here. But the really interesting thing about this board is that you can transplant your old DDR4 memory. So it will work exactly the same. You don't need to do anything, it just it just works because the 12th generation CPUs do, do support tw um, DDR4 as well as DDR5. So this motherboard supports DDR4 memory, but DDR4 memory alone. It does not support DDR5. There aren't any extra slots like we used to see back in the day, like DDR2 or DDR3 or something. Only DDR4 on this board. So yeah, it saves you that initial upgrade cost um, by being able to transplant your existing memory or buy cheaper DDR4. G DDR4 is generally still cheaper than DDR5 at the moment. So that's what's kind of interesting about this motherboard. The flip side of that, of course, is that you won't be able to upgrade to DDR5 in future unless you upgrade the motherboard as well. And bear in mind that the LGA uh, 1700 socket is going to be around for a while. We've got at least another generation of CPUs to come on this CPU socket, which is great news considering that the 12th gen CPUs are really, really good. Uh, don't forget to check out all my reviews of the three CPUs that we've um, that we've basically been handed out so far from Intel, the 12900K, the 12700K and the 12600K all there in my reviews and my other videos. So check out the links below and you can also buy them in the links below as well in the description. So with this board then, DDR4 memory support, but pretty much everything else is like you would expect from a tough board. You've got some pretty good features, a very, very solid set of features for the price. And what we're gonna be doing today is just checking out things like the uh, the VRMs, the thermals, uh, the features on the board, the M.2 heat sinks, how they work, what the back panel looks like, and talking through all the ports, how I got on with overclocking with the 12900K, and that is pretty much it. So hopefully coming up to some sort of conclusion at the end as to whether this board is worth your cash, whether you should look elsewhere for another DDR4 supporting motherboard in the Z690 range from any of the other manufacturers, or whether you should ditch DDR4 altogether and just go with DDR5. So we're gonna be checking out those things today. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications if you do, so you're notified when I uh, upload a new video. And also don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. Are you upgrading to an Intel 12th gen uh, CPU? Are you buying a new PC? Are you building a new PC? Are you, but more importantly, are you gonna go for DDR4 or DDR5? What do you think at the moment in terms of the reviews that you've seen and that kind of stuff? So always love hearing your side of things in the comments. Uh, it's super, super interesting. Uh, and anyway, let's crack on with the review. Okay, so let's have a look at the board and what's in the box as well. So starting with the box, and it's a pretty basic fare because it is a tough board after all. It's not a ROG Strix or a full-on ROG board. So the Wi-Fi aerial is magnetic and that can stand up on your desk or connect, hook up to uh, your case if it's steel. If it's aluminium, you'll probably have to rig up some kind of double-sided uh, mounting tape on there. The rest of the box though is pretty basic, just a couple of SATA cables, M.2 screws, which you can see there. You've got the manual, some stickers, and the driver disc. Uh, IO shield, of course, not included here because that is integrated onto the motherboard. So 
here it is then and uh, as you can see there's a pretty good selection of PCI Express slots uh, the top 16 times slot is PCI Express 5 supporting of course and backwards compatible too not that there are many PCI Express 5 uh, compatible devices out there just now certainly not graphics cards or anything um, and uh, a whole bunch of other smaller ports as well for sound cards and uh, and the like so Looking at the M.2 ports first, we've got a, uh, a large heatsink down here, which just uh, removes like so and covers two of the ports here. And I'm really, really glad to see that ASUS is including the tool-free latches on its uh, more budget-focused end of the spectrum as well. So all of the uh, ports here, you can see there are actually three ports down this end. Uh, there's no heatsink on this one, but you do get the latch, but there are also latches on both of the ports at the southern end of the board, which is probably where I'd, I would have my SSD as well. So looking at the, uh, the specs, they actually list it here. So both of these ports at the base appear to be PCI Express 4.0 supporting, which is great news. So um, you can use uh, either of those ports if you're lucky enough to have a super fast PCI Express 4.0 SSD. And uh, up here at the top, we have another port. Just need to remove the screw out of that one. And then hopefully we can get rid of it. And uh, again here, we're looking at the, uh, the tool-free latches being included, which is uh, really, really good. So a super, super easy board to work with and in terms of fan headers what have we got we got one two three another two over there so that's five six seven so that's a reasonable amount i think that's what you'd expect from a motherboard um, of this price and um, sata ports you do only get four ports here so if you've got a whole bunch of hard disks and old ssds to transplant you might find you come up short but most of us just have, you know, maybe one or two hard disks and a two and a half inch SSD or something to transplant from another case. But good to see that two of those ports are at least right angled down there. So they will be a lot easier to cable tidy in your case. Um, also, USB 3.0 header as you would, sorry, USB Type-C 3.1 header, uh, as you'd expect in uh, on a modern motherboard at this price. And um, RGB headers, you've got, a four pin and a three pin up the top there and uh, again down here you have two three pins so a whole bunch of digital rgb connectors um, pretty beefy heat sinks for the vrms and power circuitry so what you're looking at here is just like two large heat sinks a particularly large one over on this side it has to be said and uh, just a smaller one here they're not connected via a heat pipe so you're not kind of spreading the load like you would do on the maximus hero board that we looked at recently um, not that it needs to with its enormous heat sinks and um, down here we've got the io panel and fairly basic i mean you've got some display outputs if you want to use the onboard graphics on your cpu for either for troubleshooting or just because you don't need a graphics card whatever and uh kind of bare minimum usb ports i think i would like to see sort of seven or eight as minimum but six is probably just about enough for most of us uh type c port uh two type c ports in fact but no thunderbolt 4 ports so Bit of a shame to see a motherboard that's retailing for close to 300 pounds not including thunderbolt 4 when it's a key feature of 12th gen cpus but i'm guessing it's just going to add too much to the price and at the end of the day this board is designed to get you into alder lake and intel's 12th gen cpus and the z690 chipset for as cheap or as little as possible really that's kind of what this thing is designed for so um on board 802.11ax wi-fi and the audio as i mentioned earlier does appear to be a fairly cutback version of the Realtek audio codec. I think it's the ALC892, which uh, certainly performed a lot less well uh, compared to the uh, other boards that I've tested, in particular the uh, Z690 Hero. That was an excellent performing board, as was the uh, ROG Strix Z690i gaming Wi Fi as well, the Mini ICX one. But here, you're looking at some fairly lowly um, audio performance numbers, not that you would probably notice it has to be mentioned so that's uh, pretty much it for looking at the board so let's move on to the conclusion so what do we make of the tough gaming z690 plus wi-fi d4 then well i think it's an interesting addition to the asus lineup and other manufacturers have done this as well they've had a 
A real think about where the cutoff point should be between DDR, DDR4 and DDR5 memory, and I think generally what we're looking at is not much of a benefit going moving up to DDR5. Yes, if you have a 12900K and in certain benchmarks, um, such as compression and that kind of stuff, you're going to see uh, quite a big difference, but Overall, in terms of gaming and content creation, there really isn't that much of a benefit. Certainly not warranting buying a whole new set of memory or upgrading and the extra cost over DDR4 as well that we've got at the moment. So I think it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good upgrade path, really. I think that, that move of, tra of transplanting your DDR4 memory into a board like this one is a move that we that should be encouraged if you're looking to put a bit of money elsewhere, such as in a bigger SSD or a better CPU cooler. That that is money much better spent than buying a much more expensive board and much more expensive memory right now. Anyway, we might see changes in future. Perhaps the next generation of Intel's CPUs for socket um, for its new socket LGA 1700 might make more of a difference, but. As yet, I don't think I'm that convinced about the upgrade it, uh, overall. So what we've got here in the Tough Gaming is uh, a much more affordable motherboard, certainly compared to many of the DDR5 motherboards out there, including the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero that we looked at in another review recently. Uh, that board costs over £500 here in the UK, which is pretty much double what this board costs. And yeah, you're not seeing as many features as a fully fledged ROG board uh, with the Tough board, but that's not really what Tough has been about. It's been about offering, you know, what Asus likes to call or what Asus probably thinks is like premium quality, and it's been rigorously tested, but at a lower price point than you than you might think. Now, two hundred and fifty pounds is still pretty expensive for a motherboard. I mean, I'm still kind of, you know, I'm an old timer. I still think that spending more than two hundred pounds on a motherboard is a pretty expensive way to go. Um, but this motherboard is pretty solid from what I've seen. It's got great M M.2 thermals and VRM thermals as well. The cooling seems to do a pretty good job. You've got all the features that you want, such as Type-C support in terms of headers and rear ports uh, too. So it's kind of an interesting take, really. The only downside for me is lackluster audio performance. So I'm not entirely sure which chipset is actually being here, but I think it's something like ALC892. Looking at the driver, some of the codes seem to suggest that, and it certainly performs like that, um, which is a little bit of a shame, but there aren't too many other cutbacks here. So um, ASUS has a great EFI, um, so does MSI, for example, with its Tomahawk board, but MSI's software leaves a lot to be desired compared to the ASUS AI suite software. Now, on the flip side of that, the ASUS software doesn't support Windows 11 at the moment, which is a bit of a pain. Um, or at least for the fan control section, so fan expert, which which is one of my favorite parts of the Windows-based software. It just saves you having to go into the EFI and fiddle around with things, or at least test your fan settings in Windows first, and then go into the EFI and plumb the same settings in. So you can do that while you're benchmarking, or, or you wanna see how your fans need to perform at certain speeds in your specific content creation workloads that you do um, each, each and every day, for example. So. From that side of view, ASUS is kind of a win in terms of Windows 10, but not any better than MSI in Windows 11 because last time I checked, which was a few hours ago, the fan expert software still didn't support Windows 11. So whether or not you're on Windows 11 or not is up to you, but yeah, that's, that's just a thing at the moment. I think there's a lot of software that still has compatibility issues, including games, of course. So Overall, though, I think this is a pretty good board for the money. Um, I think it is definitely one that would be on my short list if I was going to be upgrading to Alder Lake as soon, which I probably will. I kind of want to get um, a 10th or 11th gen build out of the way first because I've got some great mini ITX boards on the Z490 and Z590 chipsets that I kind of want to have a play with for a few months. Let things settle down with, 12, uh, with 12, uh, 12th gen and Windows 12 and then maybe take the leap then. Um, but really, I'm just gagging to have a play with that 12600K, which is just an amazing CPU. I just want to get that in my main rig as soon as possible, really. So we will see. Um, of course, I do prefer Mini ITX over ATX, but this is definitely a board that I would add to my shortlist, and I suggest you do it yourself and just compare the features. In general, there is nothing bad here to worry about. So it's a pretty good board, slightly lackluster audio, but it's generally an excellent offering for around £250 or $300, uh, depending on where you live. So I would like to thank ASUS for sending over the sample and uh, more motherboard reviews are inbound as well as some really cool features and stuff. So 
Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as always and like and comment as well. I love hearing what you guys are doing in terms of your uh, your upgrades and that kind of thing. So uh, especially in as far as your uh, your Alder Lake upgrades, are you going for DDR4 or DDR5? Which motherboard are you going for? Which CPU are you going for? Or are you sticking with AMD or holding off, uh, holding around, um, holding onto your wallet until AMD's next generation CPUs are around? Maybe something like that. So let me know in the comments and I'll see you soon. See ya.